Okay, so before we begin, let's recap the compound interest formula. So the compound interest formula is FV is equal to PV 1 plus IM to the power of N, where FV is the future value, PV is the present value, I is the interest rate, it's taking the effective interest rate, and it will be in decimal fraction notation. M is the compounding period. So if it's monthly, it would be 12. If it's yearly, it would be 365 and so on. And N is the duration. And your duration and the units of N and, the U and M need to coincide. So if M is compounding period monthly, it'll be 12, then your N needs to be in months. Okay, so we have the compound interest formula. 1 plus I M to the power of N. Now we want to make I the subject of the formula. So to do that, we're going to have to do a bit of maths. So the first thing we're going to do is we can see that there is a bracket which incorporates I and PV is multiplied with this bracket. We want to get I by itself, so the first thing we want to do is get rid of that PV that's multiplied to this bracket. So we're going to divide through by PV. So we're going to have the future value divided by the present value is equal to 1 plus I M to the power of N. Okay, so that's step one. Step two is going to be a little bit harder to grasp. So we want to get rid of this n now. And to do that, we need to remember what um, powers do and how we can get rid of powers. So say you have a to the um, 4 kind of situation. If we want to get that 4 away, we would have to essentially have that a to the 4 to the power of 1 upon 4, because then when you do the exponents, to get the new exponent, it's going to be 4 times 1 upon 4, which is equal to 1. Okay, so if we want to get rid of that 4, we would actually have to take, the, take it to the exponent of 1 upon 4 to get rid of it. Or in simpler terms, of if you had a squared, how would you get rid of the squared? you would do it by square rooting it. So you would square root it, and then you'd get plus or minus A coming out. Now that square root is essentially just saying that. So that kind of situation is going to happen here. So we're going to take both sides over the exponent of one upon four, and one upon n, so future value, present value, one upon n, one plus i m to the n, and this whole thing is one upon n. So now we're going to get future value, present value, one upon n is equal to one plus i m. So we one more step closer to getting i m by itself. So I'm just going to move the screen up a bit like that. The next thing that we're going to do is luckily a little bit easier for us. It's just getting rid of this one on the side. To do that, we just minus by one on both sides. So we're going to have future value, present value, one upon n minus one is equal to i m. And once again, if we don't like looking at it like that, we can just rewrite it. So that your I M is on the left hand side. And there we have the formula to work out I, the interest rate, technically the effective interest rate. And just a note that if we can work out the effective interest rate, we can work out the nominal interest rate. Because remember, your Nominal interest rate is just your J is equal to your IM 
times by your M. So once you work out the effective interest rate, we can work out the nominal interest rate. So let's go do some examples. Okay, so this example says a loan of 6,500 Rand with monthly compounding costs 4,484 and 45 cents in interest after five years. What is the nominal interest rate? Okay, so the first thing we need to notice is it does mention monthly compounding. Therefore, we know it is going to be the compound interest formula. So FV is equal to PV, 1 plus IM to the power of N. Next, we know it asks for what is the nominal interest rate. And that means that we need to work out the effective interest so that we can get the nominal interest, which means we want the effective interest as the subject of the formula. So that's FV over PV, 1 upon N minus 1. So that's the formula we're going to be using. Okay, so we have used those two pieces of information so far. We know that once we have the effective interest rate, we can get the nominal interest rate. So let's write the nominal interest rate formula. So it's IM times by M. So we're going to use this one as well. So we're going to have a step one and a step two. Now let's look at what information we're given. So it says a loan of 650,000. So we have a present value of 6,500. Pretty sure I said that wrong there. Okay, so 6,500. With an interest cost of 4,484 Rand and 45 cents. So that's actually big I. So 4484.45. So we have to be very careful there. They didn't give us the future value. They gave us the big I, which is the total interest over the, the period that we take out the loan. Then they say it's after five years. So we have N is equal to five years. And that's pretty much all the information that we have other than the monthly compounding, which means that our M is equal to 12. Okay, so that's officially all the information we have. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that M and N coincide. So M is 12, so it's months. So N must be in months. So we're going to change this to months by just multiplying it by 12. And that's going to give us 60 months. All right. Now we like, okay, what information do we have? So in our first formula, we have PV, we have N, we don't have the future value yet, and we want to find what IM is. So do we know anything else to tell us what the future value is? We do. We know that the future value is just the present value plus the total interest. And hey, that's convenient because we have the total interest. So we can work out what the future value is. So the future value is equal to 6,500 plus 4,484 and 45 cents, which is equal to 10,984 Rand and 45 cents. Now we have enough to work out the effective interest rate. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have I12 is equal to then we have 10984.45 divided by 6500, all to the power of 1 over 60, minus 1. And that is going to give us approximately equal to 0 0.00878, etc. Now we're going to keep that value. We're not going to round it off or anything yet. So remember, when we're doing our working out, we try to keep everything for as long as possible. So you'll either store it in memory or you'll just jump to the next step where you just have to multiply it by M. So to find the nominal interest, we'll take that I12 times by 12. And that means we're going to get that to be approximately equal to 
0 0.10539, etc., etc., etc. Now we can do the whole, you know, rounding off and stuff like that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply it by 100 so we can get it in percentage. And if we do that, we're going to get 10.539, etc. And we're going to round it off to two decimal places. So 539 should be 54 percent and it is going to be per annum compounded monthly where do we get the compounded monthly because it told us it was compounded monthly and our normal interest is always per annum brackets the compounding period now i just want to go through how i get to the answer of 0 0.00878 with my calculator to just make sure that you are comfortable getting there because it does require you to be careful with what you put into your calculator. So just gonna do it down here. We have that IM, which is I12, is equal to, and we have the 10984.45. And the 6,500 all to the one upon 60 minus one. Now, when you're putting this into your calculator, you could use for this one upon 60, you can either use the function keys y to the power of x or the function key, which is the square root with x above it. So it's your basic choice on how exactly you want to go about that. Now, when you're putting it in, just be careful and make sure that you have brackets around the term over here. So if you're going to put it in, just be careful and again, make sure that it's there just as a double check that it's going in correctly. So you put brackets, then you'll put the 10984.45 you would either use your fraction button or divide by. So divide by, and then the 6,500, you would then close your brackets or make sure that your brackets are closed and then use the Y to the power of X button or the square root of X button. If you use the Y to the power of X button, so Y to the power of X button is used, you would then have brackets, one, divided by 60. So be very, very careful to make sure that it is in brackets. So it's incorporating the whole thing there, or you'd use the fraction. So you'd have one over 60. Uh, I will do work with the calculator in a few more videos down. And then you'd have the minus one. Okay, so just be very, very careful. Make sure you put your brackets in the correct places. Make sure you're forcing the calculator to see what it needs to cover. And then you would get your answer in the whole.